Hello, Cloud Gurus, and welcome to a special episode, an update from reInvent 2021. We are live, like actually in person at reInvent. I have with me David Tucker, and you may not recognize David Tucker, but David Tucker has been doing a bunch of awesome updates for all the clouds, actually, obviously AWS as well. And uh, um, Cloud Tracker is the series, so you should definitely also check that out. Um, do you want to tell us uh, a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. So I've spent most of the last 10 years working in the cloud in some form or fashion, and you'll find a lot of my content over at Pluralsight, and that's where the Cloud Tracker series is. I live and breathe the cloud on a daily basis. So I'm excited to share some of the updates that we heard in today's keynote with all of you. Absolutely. And actually, that brings us to the next thing. Updates from the keynote. What was your key takeaway from the keynote? So one of the things I thought that was amazing was hearing the advancement that they have in chips. And there really were two different things that came with this. The first was we have the new Graviton 3 chip. So there's going to be a huge performance improvement that we're going to see from it. It's going to enable people to run more workloads in a more cost efficient manner. And here was the cool thing too. They even talked about the impact of the carbon footprint, which is something we've heard Google and Microsoft talking a lot about lately too. The other big thing was the Tranium chip that they had previously announced is now available to use because we know that the machine learning battle, there's two sides to this, the software and the hardware. So big steps on that front. So with all that said, what's something you remember from the keynote this morning? All right, well, it probably wasn't my favorite announcement, but I got to say that the mainframe modernization announcement, that was AI giving me side eye here. <laughs> there's some interesting value there. Um, I mean, uh, giving uh, people an opportunity um, to, as they said, reduce their project time by, what was it, two thirds? I'm just, every project is going to be two thirds fast. You don't believe me? What, I'm just curious, what does it work on exactly? I don't know. Just, they said it. If it's got a mainframe <laughs> sticker on it, it's good to go? Yeah, I think if okay. from the mainframe manufacturer people. If okay. it, it's like, I'm sure it's a partnership with them. Do, do they have mainframe stickers you can go put on your application? Yeah, so it's like mainframe inside, a little it's sticker man. on the front. If it reduces your project time by two thirds, totally worth it, 100%. <laughs> I'll throw it to you again. What, what was another thing that stood out to you that you wanted to, uh, to talk about? Yeah, I think this is almost a continuation of the first thing I mentioned here, is that it's a really around machine learning. And there's certainly a push, because you even saw them take time in the keynote and restate all the different ways they help people with machine learning. And then they introduced a new solution called SageMaker Canvas. And this is designed for people that have virtually no understanding of data science, that can get in and actually get valuable insights out of data. And so this is really an extension on top of what we see with SageMaker Autopilot that makes it even easier. Yeah, I mean, isn't it even just a visual thing? Like it, you're not even going in and coding stuff. You're literally using like drag and drop to, to put together uh, like machine learning pipelines. I mean, bringing it closer to the people, that's what needs to happen. And I mean, AWS has had a history of doing that for all different layers of the stack. And this is, I think, just another one of them. Absolutely, and you can even go check out the blog post on this one because it shows you how it will actually look at the data and tell you what algorithm you should be using. Again, without you having to know what algorithm algorithms solve what data problems. Even people who are experts in that, they spend a lot of time trying to figure all that out. But if you can have a service that will actually figure out for you, hey, look, I ran them through a bunch of things. This really does seem to be the best approach. I mean, that's that's taking advantage of AWS. That's Absolutely. why we're here, right? So, Definitely. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Nice. So what else did you hear that you got excited about from the keynote? Well, I'm always excited about serverless announcements. And Absolutely. so it was pretty cool to see that there are now serverless and on-demand offerings for a bunch of analytics things. So in particular, we have serverless Redshift, we have serverless EMR, and we have serverless MSK, so the managed streaming for Kafka. And we also have on-demand for Kinesis data streams. So that that's pretty cool. And uh, I think that there's a blog post that we can link for you about uh, the uh, Redshift serverless um, it is really cool. Like uh, you don't pay at all while your Redshift cluster, which they're still managing for you behind the scenes, um, is idle. So um, you're loading data in and then the second you stop, you stop paying. Then you start making queries later and you'll start paying again uh, based on just the time when you're loading and querying. So, I mean, that that's that's really awesome. That's and it good stuff. absolutely makes analytics easier, especially for those getting started. So I think everyone should go check out that blog post. Absolutely. Uh, so, hey, what's another announcement that, uh, that you took away from the keynote? Well, well the one I wanted to, to highlight, just because for me it was the most unexpected announcement of the whole thing, was that AWS now has a private 5G offering where they will package up everything organizations need to deploy 5G at the edge for you know, warehouses, locations, factories, and the like. And so I'm gonna be really interested to see how customers are actually going to be using that in the future with AWS. 
Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I'm not really into that space all that much, so I'd be interested in seeing what comes out of it. Is there anything that stuck out to you about that in particular? Yeah, I, I think really for organizations that are looking to do a lot of IoT work, where sometimes there's so many sensors that traditional communication methods aren't ideal, this could be a pretty much a game-changing service for them, and it's gonna ease the way that it takes them to get into 5G. So I think, again, we'll have to wait and see, but I think there's some exciting things that it could be on the horizon. So be sure to stay tuned, because there are so many more announcements coming this week, and you'll be able to find everything you need here. Sounds good. Keep being awesome, Cloud Gurus. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> hey, where's the hair guy?